Hi everybody, for the like other 50 people that joined after we did introductions, I'm Matt Gordon. Uh, I do the Ruby News at the beginning of all the meetups. Uh, I tend to assume a certain level of knowledge about the Ruby and Rails culture. So if I'm talking about something and you have no idea what I'm talking about, just say so. A little wide range of experience here. Uh, okay, so news from the past month. Uh, we'll see. Releases, I just rounded them up. So these four were the most prominent. I thought, uh, uh, oh, I put that in the wrong place. Actually, it was Passenger did 305 and 306. They did three releases, both of which were fantastically inconsequential, but, uh, you know, upgrade if you like. Uh, they were really obscure stuff. Uh, the new version of Rails came out, and that one actually you should pay attention to. There was a cross cross site scripting vulnerability with Autolink. So who in here actually uses Autolink? Cool, so nobody needs to care about that. But if you ever used Autolink and you were using less than 306, you should because it marks things as HTML safe when in fact they were not safe. It just always marked it as safe regardless. Uh, let's see, uh, JRuby 1.6 came out, which makes it completely 192 compatible. So, how many people in here use JRuby? Wow, these are really inconsequential releases for you guys. Uh, you. And then uh, Ruby Jones 172 came out, and I put that on the list because it was impressive <coughs> that he made a release for one item in the change log. And it no, seemed... I know our doc. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's never going to happen, man. Did you read that thread? I'm yeah. gonna ask every time it comes up, though, just mostly because of that thread. Well, you guys obviously didn't get all get all in there and plus one enough. So uh, to fill you guys in, the there was a big argument. It was the last month or two months ago. Last month. Last month. Uh, last month, because a bunch of people. Like the Ruby gems, it comes with uh, automatically compiling the documentation and putting it on your system. And basically, everybody else thinks it's worthless because everybody uses the online documentation. But the guy that maintains it insists that it's good for new people. The people that have three or fewer months' experience with Ruby, how many people even knew that when you install the gem, you get documentation? <laughs> yeah. Cool. So how many people knew it takes like ten seconds per gem to install? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many so people turn that off. Yeah. <laughs> there's some, there's some turmoil there. You can turn it off, uh, but it's on by default. So he's cranky. Uh, let's see. Speaking of cranky, DHH was <laughs> once again cranky uh, this month. He he really likes to be cranky. So he decided to be super smooth and uh, call out uh, RSpec and Cucumber and some of the other popular advanced testing frameworks and say that they were basically worthless and that only people that didn't really know about testing, would use those things, which really made a bunch of people in the Rails community uh, excited. Um, <laughs> uh, so if you, if you haven't checked out that thread, it's actually pretty interesting. Not because DHH had any interesting points to make, but because the, the arguments against what he was saying were actually pretty eloquent. And so if you're not familiar with you know, using RSpec or why we'd use RSpec versus Cucumber or some of the other things, this is a really good opportunity for the people that, that have good opinions about testing. To, you know, to to say those things. Yes, I don't think DHH has a good opinion about testing. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, though he did finally give up and, uh, and switch away from prototypes, so Rails 3.1, or so he says, will will be jQuery by by default. Right. How many people in here use prototype? Okay, so this is this is a consequential change. Oh, how many people use jQuery? Yes, consequential change. <laughs> it's actually going to do the thing that you use instead of the thing you don't use, starting with 3.1. You're also doing CoffeeScript. What's that? Yeah, yeah. CoffeeScript. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. oh, did I miss it? Yeah. What, what, so CoffeeScript, SAS? Yeah. Going to be defaults. Hamel? No. no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured, you know, you get some cranky people, that one's not as... Here's the DHH quote of the day. I also love people telling me uh, what the real Rails philosophy is, uh, and then he started. This is all around the copy script stuff all day. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen some of his previous presentations? Yeah, he's a classy dude. <laughs> he knows that Shaw. He knows that Shaw. That is true. Can't wait till this video is on the internet. By the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> come and get me. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a clip from uh, 
Twitter blog post, Twitter switched out the, their search front end from Ruby on Rails to Java, and all of the all the news aggregators, you know, they had the you know, you know, Twitter gets three x performance improvement by switching from from Ruby to, to Java, and you see this, and it's like, yeah, we we did a lot better, and then right below that, they're like. Yeah, it's a lot better because we completely failed to maintain it and then had a huge amount of code debt and actually didn't know what we were doing when we wrote it. But instead of making it better in Ruby, we just switched to Java. That's actually what they say in the post. So, but it, it does work a lot better. There's some interesting stuff in there about, about what they did. But uh, So sometimes the big rewrite works. Huh? Um, yeah, if you knew the first one bad enough. <laughs> no, stick with the PHP, it'll work. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mouth Stone with Thunder back there. I was going to give a shout out to you know, Square Mouth because they've been coming for a long time and they finally finished their uh, their Rails rewrite. Is there anything you guys want to say about about doing the rewrite? What you learned? Interesting experience? Fail points? Fail points? How many hits? That's a good question. That's like three or four thousand. Yeah, Eighteen, 18 months. months? Wow. 18 months? Yeah, 18 months. Were you maintaining the old app at the same time? Yeah. How much do you feel like that contributed <coughs> to the length of your timeline? Not really? No. Yeah, separate team. No, oh, separate team, okay. Yeah, it was also good. He usually maintained, I mean, we haven't touched, we didn't touch the for 18 months, practically. Oh, okay, so you... Okay. But the release went smooth, I and mean, we've got a lot of testing now that we never had before. Okay. In the Cucumber Arts, with a lot of the stuff we were talking about, so I think that helped our release go pretty smooth. I mean, there's a few hiccups here and there, but nothing like before. Okay. Sounds like it was a rousing success. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Uh, let's see. The only other piece of local news that I could dig up was actually my own. Uh, so, uh, this is whenever I can't think of anything to do, any, any reasonable picture to show for Ruby News, I just take the first Google result for whatever the thing is. Anybody want to take a stab at what news item this is? Oh, I thought he was just pointing at you because it was about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of gave you a hint. It's a, actually, I realized that yes, the last month was the one year anniversary of the Ruby News. I've actually been doing this for, for 13 months now. So, I, I had no idea. Uh, did did you any other, what's that? Did you bring cake? I, I, I found it like half an hour ago. <laughs> no, there was no cake. Maybe cake will be next time. I thought that's what we did now with you and someone here had a one year anniversary yep. or something. Right? That's the rule. I have to bring my own cake. <laughs> you guys are lame. It's Nate's fault. I brought my own cake. <laughs> there wouldn't have been enough. It's a good thing. What, you think I don't want cake? Now <laughs> <laughs> um, pass. Other, other local news? Things that I missed? Uh, just Gems. wondering how this picture came up when you did that search. So this is actually not the first image. The first image was not safe for work. This is the second image. Oh, that's right. The search was Ruby News Roundup one year anniversary. All spaces. Wow. <laughs> For those of you that are playing. And, and this game. came up. <laughs> yeah. This is you know, gem news more than local. There is an unpatched vulnerability for cross site scripting in both parents and off logic. Because Rails 304 changed the response to uh, you know, the, the, the key mismatch. It does a reset session instead of raising an exception. And any auth any authentication scheme using its own cookie uh, is now now presents a vulnerability. Well, that's that's worth knowing. Thanks. Uh, any other news that I missed? For the maybe one person in the universe who's using our fork of rescue Mongo, um, we've all been handed it off to someone else now because we're not using it in production anymore, and they are. It's some company that does digital media something or other in Sweden, I think. Just kind of cool that, you know, it's out there and they took it, but uh, we're still doing stuff a little bit here and there, but it's mostly off to them. So I think that affects one person. Cool. Who's not here, so. You know. Anything else? PAL rack server. <coughs> what, 37 signals PAL, the rack server that they released this week. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a big uh, rack server. So you just, so um, uh, it's the name of your site. So you have a site called, you know, whatever, foo. And then it'll be, if you just go to a browser, you type in foo.dev, it'll automatically serve up without having to issue the real server name or anything like that. It's just huh. a bunch of magic. So you can run multiple 
Rails projects at once inside of dev. So it's pow.cx is the web address. It was kind of like the passenger one, except the setup was just to make one symlink and then that's yep. it. So it's kind of like yeah. There's a curl one. command for the install. And, yeah. It's on node. It's, it's on node. Yeah. And pop does it work out well? Mm -hmm. It does. You have to remember to run the, the tail command, where you'll sit there and go for my dev tails, because oh. you don't even need the terminal to, to run. So, yeah. That's right. pretty awesome. And then Pow also let the gosh. I don't know if people see that. The, like, everyone was concerned about the whole security implications of curling uh, an install script. So somebody at 37 Signals as a response to that then ended up writing this little like, wrapper around downloading a shell script, validating it yourself, and then typing yes if you want to install it when you're done. Okay. So, for anybody who's worried about these security implications of typing a shell script. I'm sure it's fine. I'll just you know, download random code for somebody to execute it. That's, that's <laughs> good. It's on the internet. It's going to be true. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure the internet is fine and safe. Uh, all right, I think that's, that's all the news. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.